Hi, I'm Liz and I have a story to tell. My early life, um, I was forced into adulthood. I had to grow up fast. I had to grow up really fast. Um, I've been on my own since I was 17. Um, lost both parents at a very young age. I was 10 when I lost my mom and I was 16 when I lost my dad. And she was diagnosed with um, acute leukemia at the age of 44. Um, and my dad was 56 when he passed. And he suffered from high blood pressure, kidney failure, two failed kidney transplants, um, and a stroke ultimately took him when I was 16. And I was a sophomore in high school. I was um, trying to make it. At that point, by the time my father passed, I um, was kind of numb, hurting, but numb. And that's where I met my high school sweetheart, in that moment, in that broken moment. Growing up in the church, because my dad was a, a pastor, I had a relationship with God. Um, I was never upset with God. I questioned him. I believe I can question him. I question him all the time. I still do to this day. Um, but I kept the faith that it was going to get better. Like, life has to get better. It, this, this can't be life for the rest of my life. Something has to happen because this hurts too bad. And I know God wants me to live a, a happy and prosperous life, so this can't be it. Um, my parents, um, they instilled in me to do the right thing, so I kept doing the right thing. I stayed in school, finished high school, went to college, finished college, and took up a trade. I love the beautification of a woman and doing hair and makeup, so I went to beauty school, finished beauty school, and just started my career. So it was never that I gave up on anything. I was never upset at God. Um, I just kept moving because I knew something else was greater on the other side. After losing both my parents um, and literally three months after my high school sweetheart met my father, that's when he passed. So he was already in my life. Um, he was there and that was a very pivotal moment in my life. And that created the trauma bond between the two of us. The one thing that I, well, the major red flag that I noticed was anger that couldn't be calmed. Um, I'm a very calm person. I'm a very emotional person, as you can see. Um, so when everyone around me is not feeling calm or, you know, I, I feel like I can feel that. And I try my best to make sure everyone around me is okay. And when I tried my best to calm an angry moment and nothing I could do or say could help, that's when I realized this is not good. The extent of my abuse was verbal, emotional, physical, financial, um, the whole list of the types of abuses that I didn't know was a thing, I was experiencing that and didn't know it was a thing um, until I left and got therapy and someone had to explain to me. Um, I don't, I didn't talk about it as much. You hear a lot of people say, oh, don't keep people in your business, don't tell people what's going on in your house. That would have kept me in my house. But when I started opening my mouth and saying something, that's when I realized, oh, this is not okay. Marriage is tough. It's not supposed to be that tough. I can't remember the first time I felt the feeling of I gotta get out of here. It was so many, honestly, um, but I do remember the last thing that made me say, God, if you just got to get me out of here. My prayer changed from God, fix it, fix my situation, fix my marriage, to God, just don't let me fall on my face because I'm about to just walk out here. Um, I'm walking and I don't see the ground in front of me. Um, it was when he did not come home one night, and it was the next morning. 
I was having to get up and come to church. I had to come to church. I had to put on a brave face, get in front of the people, get on stage and edify the people, sing praise and worship. Had to lead a song that morning. Couldn't. Told everybody, hey, can't do it. Um, I made it to sound check that morning after I found out that he was okay. Didn't answer the phone all night, stayed up all night. My children wondering, hey, where's daddy? Um, came home still reeking of alcohol. Um, I didn't want to say anything. I didn't want to talk. Um, I just was glad that he was not in jail or in the hospital or dead in the ditch somewhere. Um, I stayed calm. He was not, as if I had done something. Um, he got in my face in front of the children and tried to fight that morning. And I asked him to leave. He wouldn't. So I left. It took me a minute to find out where I was going. But that was the moment. Um, and I was happier sleeping in the basement at my girlfriend's house with my babies on an air mattress than I was in a five bedroom house. Now my life is still progressing, still progressing. I'm happy. I'm happier. God is still good. I have not fallen on my face. I have not missed a meal and my babies are happy. Um, that's the gist, but there has been therapy for me, for my babies as well. It's an ongoing process. My advice to anyone, male or female, that's being abused or feeling some form of abuse from their spouse, from their loved one, from their person, um, is that God doesn't want you to feel that way. You can love this person with your whole heart, but that's not God's calling for you. That's not your ministry to deal with that, to be someone's emotional and physical punching bag. Um, my fear was that God would be upset with me if I left my union, I left my covenant that was thrown around at me a lot. The church talks about um, God hates marriage, hates divorce. Um, so I was afraid, I was afraid to leave. And that made it harder for me to leave. But pray about it and let God take care of you. We learn forgiveness from a child. If you grow up in a church, you learn forgiveness. Oh, you gotta forgive, you gotta forgive. But there comes a point when, if the person you're forgiven hasn't forgiven themselves, you got to know that you still done your part and it's okay. Because if that person have, hasn't forgiven themselves, they will continuously struggle. They will have a fight within themselves and they will find a way to take it out, sometimes on the person that they have even offended. But it's still your job to do the forgiving on your part. You can't hold that stuff in. So even if your forgiveness is not received, you still gotta forgive. I am Liz, and this is my story.